In today's video, we're gonna go over some creepy TikToks. Let's get into it. I've played my fair share of Tekken. I don't know if you know what Tekken is, but in the video game world, Tekken is a fighting game. And I am almost 100% sure that that is Devil Kazuya from Tekken. But I'll pull up an image if I can find it. I might even be able to find that exact reference of him from the game so you can see. I'm 100% sure this is a CGI video, but it does look very good. And the editor that edited this video did a wonderful job at blending it in and making it blend in with the surroundings. The flash and everything bouncing off of it. Very good editing. 100%. But from a video game, I know it is. You remember the crash and being blasted with shattered glass. You awaken, but not into reality, but in the void. I added this video in here because when I was a child, um, I stayed with my grandpa quite a bit, and he was a factory worker that worked for a magnetic factory. He was kind of a scientist that made mag magnets, basically. Um, <laughs> and he always wanted to make a car that operated off of magnets. He even went as far as developing a rotary system that had a flipping mechanism to do a negative and positive attraction to magnets to help stop and go the vehicle. The only problem that he ran across for the most part is it would not, the, the speed, he could not get the speed to be controllable. Whenever he had the magnets with each other, it was just one set speed, and depending on the weight, it would be a certain speed. And he just didn't have enough magnet power to really back this up. But um, this is interesting to me, and I'm wondering if maybe he wasn't onto something and we're eventually going to see magnet-propelled vehicles in the future.
I really enjoy these types of buildings. I like the exploration of old abandoned buildings or left behind parts of buildings that are no longer in use but are down underground or just completely closed off to the general public. I always find them extremely fascinating, you know, the history that went there. This building is still connected to a mall and it still has power, so it isn't just a completely abandoned building, but it's still really cool nonetheless that there's a whole section of this mall that's not being used. There's a whole underground section of offices and things like that that's really cool. I really enjoy these types of videos. All I gotta get you to see, if I could just get you to see that that, that nigga, them mountains is tree stumps. If you can really see that, you, the veil is broken, bro. Because from that point, you see everything. You see everything. Evidence of branches and leaves laying next to a uh, huge stump. In fact, one of the leaves measured taller than the Empire State Building. I want to take you to the location now. And here we go. And the area that we are looking at is north central Madagascar. Right in this area here. There are more than one example of what look like to me ancient tree stumps with quite possibly large branches and large leaves in some cases laying next to some of these very huge structures. This is one that I showed you guys yesterday. Measure this thing and you can look at the side view even on Google Earth here. We'll go side to side. There's the stop. 4,000 foot on this side over here. Go across. A little taller on this side, at about 4,150 feet. It's over 8 miles wide. We look at the miles, 8.45 miles. We could set the entire city of Nashville and all of its suburbs right there quite comfortably. If you go to the left, which would be about the 10, 11 o'clock position, all over in this area, you'll find what look like leaves and branches all over the ground. Here's an example of one here. There's many 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 examples this one here we're going to measure real quick and i'll show you just to kind of put things in perspective how long that thing is compared to something that's very tall so we'll measure from top to bottom and we'll go in feet 1596 feet that one branch is taller than the empire state building we showed in a video earlier, right there. I think it's the same exact branch that's on the ground. Taller than the Empire State Building. And there's others. There's many others. So if you look around, you'll also find many more examples of these leaves, like right here, big, huge branches. But when you really get to looking at the mountain, you'll be like, oh, shit. That should do like a tree that got cut down. And then you start scanning back, looking at the whole mountain range. You'll be like, oh, Fuck, that's the tree they cut it right there. <laughs> that's disguised as mountains. Boy, that shit stand out clear as day when you notice that's the tree you're looking at. And then think about how tall the tree was. You're like, oh shit, hold on now. I'm looking for evidence about all oh, this shit Rashad Jamal be talking about how we fell in frequency and this was our planner and we was giants and we was blue, red, and green and you did blah, 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 bleed. Look at this big ass tree. This is a tree right here. And it's gone. First off, why they cut it? What the fuck they cut it with? And what they do with the, with the rest of the tree? That's where your mind gonna go. And then when you start looking at how spaced out they are from each other, and if they was that big, you can see the forest. Because see, if you look at it as a mountain, you'll see one mountain range right here. And then way in the backdrop, you'll see another, another mountain range. But let's look deeper. Imagine that mountain range you're looking at was a big ass tree. So if it was a big ass tree, once the, that the branch is gonna cover out far as fuck, a tall ass tree, the branch is gonna go down to hold up the state, nigga. Right? So now that would make sense why the mountain ranges be so so spaced out from each other. But if you think about how big the tree was, they really not that far from each other. You see what I'm saying? You gotta think about like them, okay. How tall was this tree? And that, even though that mountain range is 20 miles away, if this tree was that fucking tall and the branches went that far out, it wouldn't have been that far away from that mountain range that seems 20 miles away. Oh, 
So now I can see the forest. Now I can see the forest. This is the forest. Look at that mountain range. Look at that mountain range. Look how far that one is from that one. Look how far that one is from that one. Then you see a nigga, you can go state to state. You go state to state, you're like, oh shit, I see it now. I see it. Now do you know why? Now you can see why we told you. We said, hey, it was so many trees on your planet at one time, and the trees were so big that nigga literally you could walk up a tree and walk from California to Canada. Now you think I want you to think about that. The trees were so big that a, a squirrel or you, because the trees were still bigger than us. We was big as fuck though, but the trees were still bigger than us. You could you or a squirrel, nigga, could walk up that tree and walk uh, just on the branches from California to Canada. And never hit the ground. So that means you can walk on the branches from California and be in Canada without ever having to come down that tree. That's how big these trees were. And you can see that clear as day if you could just understand that those are tree stumps, not mountains. It's easy to see. I mean, the video is a little long-winded for sure, but mountains do look like tree stumps. That they do. When you actually sit back and look at them, especially from Google Earth, they look like tree stumps. They're perfectly formed like a tree stump would be. But I don't know. This one is, it's tough for me to believe that their trees were that big. And I know from learning on some things from the Book of Enoch that they were cut down so that giants could not cr climb them from the Great Flood and things like that. But it's just like, man, that's, that's pretty crazy that we had trees that big. And why did they not grow back why like i have a tree outside i have a pine tree that we cut down a really tall one and it by the next year already had like a six foot tall pine tree sticking out of the stump so it's just like where and why didn't those trees regrow why did they just get leveled off is it because of some kind of cosmic force divine force it's just those are the questions that i have now with it and the leaves and everything that that one guy was showing with the big leaves, those definitely look like leaves. Those are 100% look like giant leaves. So I would like to believe that we had giant trees. It's just, that's a really crazy theory for me to, to really hold on to. Let me know what you guys think, big trees or no big trees. Hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. I only ask once per video and I make a video like this almost every day. The holy grail is your neck and head. It's a cup because the sun and the moon represent the pineal and the pituitary gland, the two male and female spiritual glands in the brain. The pineal gland produces melatonin, the pituitary produces serotonin. Every time the moon enters your sun sign, every month, month. The two fluids take a trip down the spine to the solar plexus, which is the cave where Jesus dies for two days. If you save your you-know-what energy, you resurrect this oil. Res is resh, which is Hebrew for the head. Erection is your stimulation. Raising your erection energy to the head is the true resurrection of Christ. When you raise this fluid up the 33 vertebrae back to the brain, it heals the body and regulates the blood. This is why the medical staff is the kundalini spine and the two hemispheres of the brain. It also activates 100% of the brain. Christ is Christos, which is Greek for oil. You raise the Christ up the 33 vertebrae to be born again in John 3 3 and this is why Jesus was crucified in Golgotha which translates to a place in the skull this is also the story of Santa and Hickory Hickory Dock up and down the clock the Antichrist is not what you think hiding this process which happens in the body which can regulate the systems in the body and make you live for hundreds of years is the true Antichrist the link is in my bio for the book of wisdom paperback or PDF I'll add a link to the Book of Wisdom down in the description if you're interested in it. I found this kind of interesting. I probably won't check out the book personally, but I will look more into this theory because I did find this pretty fascinating that, you know, basically our body, our head is the Holy Grail and all of these, all of these magical effects affect us through our body and how we take care of it type deal. I'm I'm really down with that. I like 
being healthy and I like trying to health, uh, better help my mind. I, I am now more and more believing that back in the ancient civilizations, when I say ancient thousands of years ago, a couple few thousand years ago, when things like this were created, uh, they had a different form of technology than we did, of course. They had to have. I think that they really utilized a lot of their technology off of vibrations and sound. I think that that is how most of their technology probably operated. They didn't have much more to go off of. But it's interesting because I've seen a few videos that were kind of similar to this one. Like this one says, you know, if you're by this temple and you slap your chest, it sends a vibration through your spine. And that just goes, if you look at the room, it's so, it's so complex with different shapes and design that it has to acoustically affect you somehow. And I find that very interesting. And I know that there's been some other videos of people going to certain temples and you can be hundreds of feet away and basically be talking as loud as I am and you still be able to hear me hundreds of feet away. I think they use technology a lot differently as far as what they had to use it for and I think a lot of it was sound and vibration and frequency. It might be crazy but I think that's kind of what everybody else is on the same page with anyways but it, it is making more and more sense as I educate myself on these types of things. We could be crazy, crazy, crazy far. We could be on the moons of Jupiter. We could be exploring Pluto. I'm in Huntsville, Alabama. I know I've said that several times. We're the rocket city. We're the biggest deal you've never heard of. Von Braun was here and we won the space race. We developed the Saturn V here. We built the Saturn V here. We won the space race here in Alabama, whether you've heard of it or not. And I can tell you for a fact, so many prototypes, so many prototypes, only prototype built like this in the world. You turn it on the first time, it works exactly like you thought it would the first time. Great data. You apply for more funding to test it more thoroughly, they cancel it. They cancel it. It goes to the NASA divestment. It goes to the auction block. People bid on it and literally scrap metal, scrap metal, scrap metal vendors win the bid and melt it down for scrap metal and sell it. We could be crazy, crazy, crazy far. We could be on the moons of Jupiter. We could be exploring Pluto that isn't even a planet anymore. If we had spent money differently. I can tell you the names of so many NASA scientists that are depressed because they have built prototype after prototype after prototype in Huntsville, Alabama. First in the world, never before seen, works the first time you turned it on exactly like you thought. This kind of falls in the line because she's talking about NASA scientists and things like that that are working on programs. So this makes me question NASA a little bit further on as to them being a real organization or not. I definitely believe NASA is not to be trusted, and I think that they provide a lot of false information. But with the amount of money that they bring in every year, it does not make me... It makes me wonder if they do actually have certain programs being done by scientists, things like that, especially for military purposes, uh, that, that go under the, the curtain that people don't know about. Even if space is fake and the astronauts in space are fake, they're still working on space technology. I don't know. So many questions about NASA. I definitely think that they're a money laundering company that just washes a lot of money a year and provides us Hollywood special effects. But then you hear stories like this 
where there's depressed NASA engineers that never get to release their prototypes, their prototypes always get scrapped, things like that. It's just like, well, if NASA's fake, then why do they have these engineers doing these prototypes? Is it because they want to keep up the facade of being a real organization or are they creating these uh, pieces of equipment for different purposes, such as military purposes or even space purposes? This questions I really want, I really, really want to know. Everything we learned in life about the universe is a lie. They said the sun is yellow, it's really green. You ever wonder why our veins are green? You ever wonder why all the trees is green? All my life, I had a green mold on my arm. I never knew where it came from. This is a message. If I was you, I would start searching my body to see if I could find little small green marks or maybe birthmarks. The Egyptians tried to tell us back in ancient times that's why they painted these people green. We are really green. You ever notice you wear fake jewelry and your skin start to turn green? The first thing a person say is, well, my skin is turning green because the jewelry is fake. No, it's trying to let you know who you really are. We got so comfortable with waking up and looking at the sun this color. The sun is only this color because they changed their frequencies to the matrix. If they start removing all these street lights from all these cities, we will be able to see the sky or real frequencies. These are blinding us from the truth. You know how they say bright lights actually blind you? Well, this is what's going on. They change our frequency or our spectrum. You ever notice if you ever get sick, you want to eat green vegetables and green vegetables heal you all the time. If you ever feel depressed, you go out in nature and nature will heal you all the time. The reason why nature is healing you is because it's vibing on the same frequency as you. We are all green because the sun is green. They say all this takes place because of the chlorophyll. That's true. We are chlorophyll. They lied to us and said our blood is red. No, our blood is green. They made us forget about the heart chakra. The heart chakra is this planet. The heart chakra is the sun. The heart chakra is everything because everything is the heart. We are really in the heart of the universe. Once you overstand your heart chakra, you will overstand everything. But what I mean by overstand everything, you will be connected to everything. There's a reason why the heart sits in the middle. The sun is the middle and all these other colors operate around it. The heart chakra is green because all colors together is really green. By the way, can't forget about the moon. The moon actually interferes with the way we see things. Once again, bright lights will always blind us. The moon is the brightest light in the sky and it's blinding us from the truth. If you ever want to get away from the matrix, go back in nature. If you are ever sick, go back in nature. If you want to be healthy, eat from nature. If you want to overstand the universe, go out and sit in the sun. The sun is green. It will connect with every cell in your body. By the way, the image of this planet that's all blue is fake. It's really the bottom one. Everything is green. I don't know. It kind of lost me there at the very end with the whole green planet. Like, I'm pretty sure we have a lot of ocean. I could be completely wrong. I don't know. I've never seen the whole planet in full. But that was a little far-fetched to me. And the sun being green and stuff like that, I'm not going to rule it out because I, I really don't know. I've never been to outer space to avoid all forms of light to see the sun. But it looks pretty orange to me. And the moon is just reflecting the light from the sun. So it's not even a bright light. I don't know. This, this one didn't really hit well with me. I do like the chakra talk. And I do like, you know, being one with nature, eating healthy and things like that. Definitely 100%. But the everything is green theory, I don't know. What do you guys think? All right, guys. I'm going to end the video here. And with that being said, have a good day.